In this tutorial, I'm going to run through how to use velocity magnitude context and velocity context to basically pull the speed and the direction of duplicator shapes and then use that to drive a few other parameters such as color and rotation. As you can see here, we've just got a whole lot of little white circles flying around. It's just driven by a general noise and it may have tweaked some parameters, but it's pretty generic. So I'm just going to jump into my ellipse shape and I'm just going to right click, add our color blend. Yeah, this has come up with a new gradient set up here. So what I can do now is just click and drag that over there and I'll grab my other color and drag that in there. So depending on how fast or slow it goes, it's going to blend between these two colors. Let's just right click on our strength up here and come down to number range. And then in our number range value, we're going to add our velocity magnitude context. So if I just hit play now, you can see that some of these circles are changing colors. And I've put this number range in between it just so that we can tweak it a little bit easier. I had a bit of a play before and I think the number around maybe 50 was it or 30? Uh, 30, we'll try that. Yeah, looks pretty good. And we've also got our graph option if we needed to tweak that a little bit as well. So that was pretty simple. We can also use this velocity magnitude content. It's such a mouthful. We can also use the same layer to uh, drive the scale. So I'm just going to put in a number range again. And I'll feed that same layer into the value. And here, I'm just going to leave that as is. I'll just see how it goes. I'm just going to change the minimum scale to 0.2 and the maximum to 2. Change this to 30. See how we go. It's kind of got a bit of a 3D feel to it as well. But yeah, it's pretty simple to set up and uh, just adds a bit more visual interest to uh, to the animation. Now we've got the same setup, but I've just changed it to an arrow so it's a bit more obvious what's going on. And in this instance, we're going to use the velocity context to pull the rotation. Let's just bring in our velocity context. So what this does is it allows us to get the direction. You can just see here the little tooltip. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. So basically what we want to do is do a little bit of maths on this, but we need to extract the values. So to extract those values, we just come in here and type in value two. And then I can just click, a, click and drag this straight onto here. So this allows us to now be able to pull the X and the Y separately. And for this one, we're going to also use a little bit of JS math. So the first part, gets the direction and turns it into a rotation for us. And the second part turns that rotation, which is radians, and turns it into degrees. In this expression, there are two inputs, N0 and N1. So we just need to feed in the X and Y. So let's just, so let's just drag those in. And you have to put those in the correct order. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to give you something that looks like it's kind of working, but not quite. And with this JS math, then we can just put this back into our whoop, back into our duplicator and put it into the shape rotation, which is hiding. Clearly, I don't do this part very often. Shape rotation. There we go. So now our arrows are following around and rotating to the direction in which they're traveling which is pretty cool. Okay, so another thing we could do with this is add some trails. And I'm just going to pop this at the bottom. And in our trails, we can just add this duplicator. And I'm just going to right click on the length and add a random. So this will be so short ones for five and long ones, maybe 80. And if I hit play, you can see that these arrows are flying around and that the trails behind them are of varying lengths. There's another 
tool that we can use to get the length of these paths, and that is the length context. Uh, I'll just throw that under there. And on our trails, we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to add a color blend. And on the color blend, I'm just going to pop that straight in there. And you can see that now that the shorter trails are darker and the longer ones are whiter. So if we jump into our length context, you can see you've got a number of remapping options. By default, it's number range. So we don't actually need a number range to do this. So if you're wanting to also use that length context with a connect shape, you might have a few issues. So you might need to use that uh, length context through a submesh. Um, so I've linked this here with the with the width. Um, but yeah, so I feel like this <laughs> this scene here is pretty much everything kind of thrown together. Yeah, I hope you uh, learned something from that. And yeah, please feel free to tag me in whatever you create online and whatever else. Uh, share a bit of cavalry love. I don't make any money on YouTube, but if you wanted to, you can jump along and support me through pipcremation.com, which is my gumroad. Uh, I've got a few different tools here that you can, um, which you can buy. Uh, I also have this Pepco Pal option, which I've just started up. You can click on yearly and just drop it down to monthly as well, um, if you wanted to. But yeah, um, little things like this, they add up and I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be uploading the files for this project here, um, as well as some of the other projects that I've been working on this year. And yeah, thanks a lot. And I uh, hope you got some value in that one. Thanks for watching.